Welcome back to the flower tutorial series in Blender 4.0. Today we'll be working on placing the flower heads on the stem in a correct, proper way. And we'll also be working on the texturing of the petals and creating that in a nice and procedural way as well. If you like this series, please leave a like, a comment or subscribe. That will make me incredibly happy. And let's dive in. Right, I want my curve back. So shift A and find your group input and just connect that up right there. Amazing. Now, obviously, we still have our cube in our scene, so we can just delete that. And now we only have our string. So how do we actually get our flower head on top of that curve? It is actually really, really easy. So let's actually edit our flower head first and see what different types of geometry we are outputting. All right. So that is always nice to see. So we have our core and our pedals. I want that to be one at the end. So join the geometry right there. We can actually just add it here, I guess. There we go. And then we know, don't need this output there. So just delete that first output that is unconnected. And now we only have one. Right, so now if you exit that, we have our default geometry output from our flower head. Beautiful. Now, group input is our curve line. So we need to distribute our flower head on our curve line. Right, so let's disconnect this. Let's hit Shift A. And let's go for uh, instance on points. Right, a curve is by default a line of points. So we already have points, so we can connect that up and connect it back up here. And the instance is going to be, of course, the flower head. But we first need to specify where that needs to go, right? Because we don't want it at every point, but only at the very end. So what we can do is drag this out to an end point selection and then just decrease the start size and the end size is one which is perfect because that will select only the very last little point of the curve. So now if you connect our flower head to the instance, we're going to have that beautifully on our curve. And it doesn't matter how long your curve is or, how, or where it goes, your flower head will always be on the curve. Beautiful. Now, the rotation is a little bit off, of course, right? So let's go back into our curve and let's fix that real quick. All right, so we have an instance on point, but the rotation doesn't match. So we can define the rotation of our instance right here at the rotation. And all we need is to align that to our curve, right? Because every point of a curve has a value of, well, it has a normal. Oh, I was meant to draw there. And that is with D, I guess. It has a normal direction. I need to go out of there. There we go. It has a normal direction, pretty much, and a tangent direction, right? So the normal and the tangent, T and N. And the tangent direction is pretty much what we need to specify the rotation of this flower head. Because at the end of the curve, this is going to be the direction it's heading in. And that's also the up direction we want for our flower, pretty much. All right, so let's make that happen. So let's just drag this out to a curve curve tangent there we go and it will be rotating nicely but to make sure it does i'm just going to hit shift a and find a line euler to vector just to make sure that our curve tangent is the actual vector that our object is going to be rotated into the z direction right so now if i draw new curves it is always going to be perfectly aligned with that direction right so if i go to the side view it is always going to be aligned perfectly right so Ctrl Z a few times to get our original flower. There we go. Let's actually give this a little bit of thickness, of course, right? Our curve, Shift A, curve to mesh. There we go. Profile curve, curve circle. Curve circle. There we go. It's too thick, of course, but we can change that with the curve radius. And Shift A, set curve radius. That is tilt, set curve radius. There we go. And the radius is going to be dependent on the spline line parameter. There we go. Now, Shift A, float curve. And I'm just going to flip this around like that. And it's not going to be completely closed up. Something like this. And then perhaps a little something like that. And then just decrease the overall radius. More like an actual flower thickness. Like that, perhaps. Let's see, something like this, I guess, looks fine. I'm gonna create a little different string because I didn't like this one. All right, that is beautiful. Right, so this is gonna be your flower. Isn't that looking beautiful already? Nice, okay. 
So now even if we go into edit mode and we change some of these points around, for example, right here, our flower, and let's enable this for a sec, our proportional edit. We can just rotate this, for example, and our flower is going to keep nicely aligned with that direction of our curve, as you can see. Beautiful. Right, so let's actually start doing some texturing. Maybe we'll add some leaves as well, right about the center. Um, let's worry about giving it some nice looks um, at first. Right, so we're in EV. I'm going to stay in EV for a sec. Maybe add a little HDRI though, environment texture. And I'm opening up one right now from polyhaven.com. It's called Whipple Creek Casibo. There we go. Now I'm just going to hide that right there. Beautiful. Just so we have some additional lights. So the reason why we made those flower petals in geometry nodes is not only because we can customize it, but also, and let's find it here, the flower head, go to edit, and then we also have our petal, which we create right there, edit. We can actually unwrap this really, really easily, all right? Because we have a curve to mesh, all right, here, this curve to mesh, control shift click to um, view that. This has all the information we need to actually store the UV map, all right? To get some values, to start texturing. And the way to do that is by hitting Shift A, and we need to capture both the X and the Y coordinates of our petal, right, of the UV map. So capture attribute, and the curve radius here, this direction is going to be one of the X or Y directions, and the other one is going to be this one, all right? Which is perfect, so we can just drag that in there and do another one there, because we need both. And we want the value to be the spline parameter because that is going to give us a direction from 0 to 1 which gives us a kind of a mapping range for the texture for the UV map right same for the bottom one and we want this to be a uh, float that's actually fine and then at the end here we want this to be stored so store named attribute this is going to be a vector because a UV map has to be a vector it has to be well it needs values from at least two dimensions right and we're going to set this to be store uv right and then we can actually connect these two up in the value by combining them to a vector right combine x y z x and y and connect it to the value so now we are storing our capture attribute value so let's delete our viewer node now we're back at our flower and now we can actually just drag all of this down there we go to the shader editor and let's actually give our petal a material first, right? So let's exit the group. This is our petal is going all the way there, all the way there, all the way there, just before we connect it up here. And we can actually just hit Shift A, set material, and then add a new material here and call the first one petal. There we go. This one is going to be petal. And then in the material tab of petal, <laughs> I'm saying that so often and I don't even know that it's a real word anymore. Then we can actually, um, well, give this a little bit of a texture, okay? So what texture are we going to use? Depends, right? So I can first of all just drag this out to a wave texture, for example. A wave texture, you can see that it looks off. It is not, um, <laughs> well, not confined really to the petal shapes. Um, so we can just drag the factor out to an attribute and name this store UV, right? And now you can see it is actually working quite well, right? It doesn't really matter if this factor or color, I think. There we go. And we can just set this to be a different direction, for example. If we make this Y, it's going to follow the shape of those leaves really, really well. So if I decrease the, the shape there, we can actually add some core lines, for example. Some nice looking, um, some nice looking textures. And we can add some sub lines there as well quite easily by just adding shift a a moth and adding another wave texture that is just a little bit bigger so let's add this back up there beautifully and then we can just scale the second one up a little bit right so we're getting one thick core line with some smaller sub lines that we can actually use to make this look quite beautiful right so this is going to be one hour color input right so we can now hit shift a and search for a color ramp and then, for example, set this to be more of like a pinkish with more of like a darker pinkish look. Something like this, perhaps. 
And we can even make this a bit more smooth and by setting this, for example, to ease. Or B spline, perhaps? Let's find out. Ease probably is the best. Something like that. Now we can even add a little bit of distortion in those lines if we want that to happen. Maybe not too much. And maybe we can even just crank that scale up. Something like this. Alright, so now we have our add. This looks like that. And a color, color, color ramp looks like this. Perhaps we need to crank that a little bit closer. So we're actually getting all of that detail out there. All right. Something like that. Right. And we can even just add. No, let's not do that. We can, we're we just going to work with this for now. Right. So I also want this add node to be our bump map. So drag that out to a bump. And we can just name this um, the height. There we go. And connect that into normal. Into the normal. Beautiful. Right. So this is where I'm going to turn my thing to a cycles and see how it looks there. So there we go. And now we have a little bit of a bump map. Right, and what we can do now is um, we don't really see the bump map because we have quite a uniform lighting in our scene, I guess. Right, there's not really that much shadows going on. And that's also because we're not showing the principal beast def. Because there we go, now it's showing. Let's crank this back to the left as well. And maybe actually just tweak those skills or at least turn this off a little bit. You see, there we go. That looks a lot better already. Right, so the thing here with flowers and stuff like that is that it's always nice to add a little bit of translucency, right? So I'm going to hit Shift-A, add shader, and I'm going to drag that out to our translucent BSDF, and the color is going to be the same as that output there, right? So now we're actually getting some light that shines through that. And the way to control how much is by hitting Shift-A and finding a hue saturation node, and playing around with the value. If I set this to zero, there's no translucency. If I set this to one, there's what we just had. And I can even crank this up more to add more translucency, pretty much. Right? And translucency is better to use in terms of speeds than, for example, your subsurface scattering, right? Which is also nice. And um, actually, that looks quite nice. But I'm going to turn it off and just work with our little translucency here and we can even crank that saturation down if we want this to be more of a whitish translucency right or if you want this to be another color you can make it more purple or more lila for example like that okay beautiful and you can even add a little bit of sheen if you really want right i'm going to crank my sheen value up and set my sheen to an even different color for example more reddish there we go and that way we can also add a little bit of a second color in there to make it look in more interesting, perhaps, right? Or even yellow or green. Green also looks quite nice. And that way we can play around with a lot of different values for our leaves. Okay, beautiful. Now play around with the roughness, of course. Um, make it look nice. And for the bump map, I'm actually going to add Shift-A, Math, and add a noise texture there. Noise texture color and up the scale a little bit reason why i want some kind of an extra little detail in those leaves so let's control shift click that how does it look a little bit bigger or smaller there we go something like that and then i'm gonna just control right mouse where is it there and control shift click the edge shader once again so now we actually have a little bit more of a bump value there and i think that looks just a little bit better all right, like that. And we can even turn the strength of those lines down by just decreasing the scale a little bit. Or maybe upping it here. Let's play around with it just a tiny little bit. I'm not a big fan of those very small lines anymore for some reason. So I'm just changing that back up. Something like this, I guess, looks a bit better. All right, so I think this looks fine already. Press for a flower, maybe change this color to be more light and more organic and beautiful. Something like that. Maybe now the translucency is a bit too much. I'm going to crank that down just a little bit to one. There we go. And our sheen, I'm going to change that color to be more purplish. Or reddish. Yeah, there we go. 
that looks a lot better already. Okay, that was part four of the flower tutorial series. In the next part, which is going to be the last part as well, we'll be working on the full picture, right? Adding everything together, creating a material of the stem, and adding the leaves on the proper position with a nice random rotation as well. And that's going to be the final one. So if you like this series, if you like this video, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. Any one of those will make me incredibly happy. And then I'll see you in the next and final part. Have a good day. Bye-bye.